14 is the police headquarters complex preliminary site layout concepts update. And while the manager is getting ready to step up to the plate. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> You have staff ready for that. Okay, we have, and let, let me say we have one, two, three, four, five, six persons that have signed up to speak on this item. So we'll hear first from the staff. Good evening, Mayor Bell, Mayor Pro Tem, Cole McFadden, members of council, Gina Probst, Assistant Director, General Services Department. Our team is here tonight to follow up on any additional questions or discussion concerning the police headquarters project since our presentation at work session on August 20th. We've provided additional information in your supplemental agenda packet arising out of our work session. Further, as requested at work session, we've solicited additional feedback from the Durham Area Designers, Preservation Durham, and <clears throat> Downtown Durham, Inc. regarding the five concepts we presented on August 20th. Our team has met with the Durham Area Designers and Preservation Durham. We have shared an alternative site concept diagram and a pro-con matrix that they have provided. Subsequently, the Durham Area Designers and Preservation Durham provided a revised matrix with additional criteria, and that has been submitted as well. Those materials have been shared directly with you, along with a letter from DDI. We do not have a formal presentation, but we're here to answer any questions, and I'll invite Deputy City Manager Bogue Ferguson to provide any other comments. Thank you, Gina. Mayor, members of council, I'm Bo Ferguson, Deputy City Manager for Operations. Uh, just briefly wanted to follow up on a meeting we did have with uh, the Durham Area Designers and Historic uh, Preservation Durham uh, last week uh, to provide uh, just brief reactions to a, a design schematic that they presented that's in your packets. Uh, we summarized our comments in the uh, follow-up agenda items that you received over the weekend. Uh, I think the first thing we would want to stress is that we, we haven't done a, a detailed analysis. It's a design schematic. It's not uh, something that our uh, architects have had a chance to really dig into. So it's, it's um, the reactions that we provided to you and as we shared uh, with Durham Area Designers and Preservation Durham when we met with them are to a certain extent off the cuff reactions. They're not the results of a detailed analysis. Um, the discussion we had, and, and I know they're here to represent themselves this evening, but I hope I would represent them fairly to say that uh, their design is one that uh, primarily achieves the goal of, of maximizing uh, the potential for private redevelopment on the site. Uh, and it is not one that uh, we, uh, we developed on our own because we uh, approached this project with the objective of primarily building from the ground up for the program of the police department and 911 headquarters. Uh, and we also in the, the council's decision to select this site uh, pursued a goal of having a presence on Main Street. And so our primary uh, 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 concern about the schematic that, that's presented is that it does eliminate any presence on Main Street uh, for uh, the police headquarters in 911. And we felt like that was a design objective. Uh, so that was some analysis that we captured for the council in, in the memorandum. Secondly, I think you know, there was a general concern that it, it, it pushes all of the uses associated with the police headquarters, uh, kind of squeezes them mid-block. It does achieve many of the uh, purported design objectives that we discussed at the 820 work session, uh, but does so in a way that, that we feel we haven't adequately been able to analyze uh, how well how it may impact the the site um, in terms of the, the the program those are general reactions again that's not a detailed analysis uh, I believe uh, that um, the Durham area designers and preservation Durham would uh, would agree that that one of the objectives that that their proposal was designed to meet was to maximize private development um, and so I, I don't think we disagree on that analysis uh, it also obviously does maintain the Carpenter Building for private use, which is not a, um, an option that, that the staff had presented uh, where we showed options for maintaining the Carpenter Building. We did so as part of the police headquarters. So wanted to just summarize that analysis, uh, both for those in attendance tonight and to recap what we provided uh, to council. And uh, with that, uh, the design team is here. The staff team is here to answer any questions you may have. Thank you. You let me first ask whether there are questions that the staff has of the council has of staff and recognize Councilman Brown. Yes. 
Uh, thank you, Bo. C can you, uh, before we get started on this, can um, for those in attendance as well as those at home, can you give us a, a general idea of where these proposals rank and vis-a-vis -vis the budget that was originally proposed? Uh, none of the five proposals that we showed on the 20th are, uh, are consistent with the original project budget that was in the CIP. Um, designs four and five are consistent with the revised budget that was discussed at, at length on the 20th. Uh, designs one through three uh, would require an additional 3.8 million on top of the revised budget due to the uh, renovation and reuse of the carpenter building. Okay, again, for those at home, can you go back and give us the original budget proposal and then how much, uh, re of course, this is determined by the po proposal that we will accept, but how much that has changed? The original project budget was approximately $62 million, which included you know, land acquisition, construction, design, soft cost, everything associated with delivering the project. As we um, went through on the August 20th work session, we have updated our cost estimates and our new revised budget to deliver the program as originally developed is approximately $80 million. Therefore, we identified some potential program reductions in order to um, reduce that difference. About $9.6 million worth of reductions. And Councilman Brown, is that your last question? Okay, recognize the mayor pro tem. Uh, maybe I should ask this question later. Um, I grew up in Durham, and um, I remember the Carpenter Building, and I'm trying to think back about what it did for the community, especially during the Civil Rights era. Just trying to find out what is really the importance of it. I know there's no uh, architectural value uh, for keeping it there. But I just need some help uh, trying to come to grips with why we want to preserve it when, like uh, a mile and a half away, a whole group of buildings uh, were destroyed. And there we're talking so much about preserving this, this, this building. And I'm, I'm talking about urban renewal now. So if somebody could just share with me the importance of this and the history of Durham as it relates to what happened to actually black owned businesses and now we're trying to keep a building that has no value and that will be even uh, uh, more costly to the project. Please help me. Do you know anybody that can help? Mayor Pro I'll just offer the, 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 the just, just Oh, you minute. want to hear that? No, okay. what, what I want, I think you asked a very appropriate question, but uh, unless the staff's prepared to respond to that, uh, we have people that have signed up to speak that may want to respond to it. Okay. Unless somebody right. on the council That's wants to respond. The staff, are you? Okay. That, that being the case, and let's see if there are any more questions by members of the council or the staff. Uh, if not, I'll go to the audience for persons who have signed up to speak on this particular item. Recognize Councilman Davis. Uh, one question, I guess um, um, we mentioned from the staff that uh, we weren't prepared to discuss the most recent proposal. Uh, is there any estimate as to when there might be an analysis that you would make that would be presented to the council? I, I think we're comfortable uh, standing by our, our opinions that we've shared. I, I think what, uh, if council directed that that was a preferred scheme, uh, we'd ask the design team to, to do an analysis. I don't think it would be, be more than a few weeks, uh, but I don't know that we're, some of the objections that, that we brought tonight are 
um, observations that I think would carry through that final analysis. What that would do would, would be more of a feasibility test to make sure that the design as presented uh, could in fact meet the programmatic requirements. Any, any other questions? If not, we'll proceed to the persons who have signed up to speak on this item. I, I'm going to initially ask if you would hold your comments to three minutes. Of course, if questions come from the council, that's not a part of your time. Uh, we have Victor Peterson, Minister Rafid Zahidi, Zahidi uh, Ellen Cassily, Wendy Hills, David Arneson, and Leslie, Leslie Frost, in that order. So if you proceed to the podium to the right, uh, as I've called your name, again, state your name and address, and the clock is ahead of you. First speaker is Victoria Peterson. Let me just make one other comment. Uh, when I call persons' names, I call them as they've written them on the card. Uh, that's why I don't say Miss or Mr. or something like that. If you say Miss, I'll put Miss on there if you don't. Call you by your name, Victoria Peterson. Uh, thank you, uh, City Council members, and thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Victoria Peterson, I live here in Durham. I just want to just share $80 million is just too much money, folks. It is just too much money. And Mr. Brown and, and Mr. Davis, and maybe the, the attorney could help me with this. I, I thought when we dealt with the uh, with the Bull state, I mean, with the stadium, uh, the people voted on it when we did the uh, Durham Bull Stadium. I would like to know from Mr. Baker, and maybe he can get up with me later on, I would like to know why isn't the citizens voting, uh, voting on this issue. Several, maybe several years ago, I came to this council pleading and begging you to address the crime problem in this community. The crime problem is just off the hook. I would like to see some monies used to get a handle and develop some good programs in this community to get the crime out. Where I live, I live in walking distance from North Carolina Central University. And folks, we've had shootings over there. We had a shooting on my street the other week, a Mr. Mayor. We've had someone come onto our property stealing. Councilman Corey McFadden and Mr. Davis. I'm not trying to embarrass my people, and when I say my people, the African American community, but we are in a crisis in this community with crime. And this problem could have been very easily taken care of years ago when when many of us came down to this council pleading and begging you to seriously address the problem. And how we address the problem, we keep building larger police buildings, hiring more police officers. The crime continues to go up. We had police officers here Saturday. A person was shot down in this community because they were having a mental health issue on Saturday. That's the second African American young man shot down by our law enforcement. What a sad, sad state and what we're doing in this community to our young black men who are in crisis. And Mr. Bonfield and Mr. Mayor and the police chief, this woman here, me, I'm sharing with you, I'm very disappointed in all three of you because you're all men. You're all men and together you have done very little to address the crime problem that is plaguing the African American community. And something needs to be done about it. And an $80 million police building is not going to do it. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Victoria. Let me, I, 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 didn't, I know you directed a question to the uh, city attorney, but the ball stadium was not built with a referendum. 
uh, there was a referendum when I was chairman of the Board of County Commissioners to build a ball stadium, and it failed. But fortunately, the city council, which I was not a part of, chose to build a ball stadium, and they built it without a referendum. So I just wanted to say for the record, that wasn't, that wasn't news, and so the council has the authority to build the police station without a referendum. Yeah, so we, we have that authority to do that. Now, the cost is a different issue, but we, we have the authority to do that. And uh, since you directed some of your remarks relative to uh, the violence in this community, uh, to me specifically, along with a couple of others, uh, it, let me say, every day, doesn't a day go by that I don't think about how we deal with this issue. If somebody has a solution, I'm open to it. I'm open to it. And you should know, and I guess the public should know, uh, just for the record, and I know it just doesn't mean a thing if you're a victim of crime. I understand that. I understand that. But I, I can tell you that since 2001, since I've been mayor, if we look at the crime index for violent crime per 100,000 people, and this city is now 251,000 people, it is lower than it was in 2001. That's true for violent crime index, and it's true for property crime index. Now, again, that doesn't take away from the fact that we still have violent crime going. But the point is that violent crime per 100,000 people since 2001 is down in terms of the year 2014. Where are we going to be in 2015? I don't know. But I look at this every day. It's on my calendar when I meet with the manager every week. And if a person has a solution, or solutions, I'm open to them, including you. Sure I, I said including you, but we're not going to do it here. We're not going to do it here, including you. Uh, the next person to speak on this item is uh, Minister Rafi Saidi. Uh, good evening, <coughs> Mayor, uh, Mr. Bonfield, and Ms. Trita. We are, I'm real familiar with you. You and I have sat down many days to discuss this issue. <clears throat> First, I wanted to say, I wanted to take a, 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 a hint, because that's what it really is, from the Herald Sun, September the 6th. According to the Deputy City Manager, Bo Ferguson, he told the Herald Sun last week, the plans presented to council back in August were run against what Ferguson called a pro-con matrix. I want to stop right there. Now, I've seen the movie The Matrix. I know there was a blue pill and a red pill. I don't want the city to take the responsibility of almost $100 million, the way things seem to be going, and later on take a pill and have to bite on that pill, which will be a bitter taste to our community. $20 million, more than the original, have already been projected for this project. Yet, there have been no complete environmental impact study. I still call for that. I call for that because I'm calling out of the divine. There is something about that area that bothers me divinely. And I believe once you put this money in that area, God will show you what I'm trying to get over to you. I'm going to leave that one as that. Our educational system in Durham, along with the county government, is bankrupt to our children. Yet we can find $80 million to put in a, bill, a building, but we cannot seem to find on a moral status money to put in our youth. Something is wrong with that picture, that the students have to beg for money in this prosperous city. Affordable housing accommodation is needed. Poor blacks, whites, and browns are almost out of doors in Durham. A public housing just came before you and begged for $500,000 to rebuild their buildings so that we would have a place to live. But we keep on talking about a police station. <laughs> In light of something that sister just said, why we can't put that money in an area where it's needed at now? Our young black men are coming out of jail. One hour out of jail Saturday morning, Brother Levante Biggs committed suicide. Why? He had no mental health treatment in jail. A man come out of jail one hour on the street, 702 Angie Avenue, 
calls his mother and shoot himself, but we have no professional, listen now, professional people in the police arena to handle these people. I'm sick of this. I'm tired of this, that my young brothers and sisters got to die because you don't have the proper health care. Trained professional people. They got to run in with guns. And I'm saying this and I take responsibility. The law of reciprocity is getting ready to come down on them. The law of reciprocity. Thank you. Uh, next is Ellen Cassidy. Thank you very much. Um, uh, first of all, I wanted to thank the council for asking Durham Area Designers to weigh in on these schemes. Um, just uh, as a side note, Durham Area Designers is made up of architects, landscape architects, uh, urban planners, and realtors, and maybe a few other folks as well. So the reason why I say that is we really look at problems from all angles. and. Um, I think as it was presented, it sounded like we were trying to maximize the um, commercial aspects of the site, and that in fact was not our, we had two main goals, and that was police safety and good urban planning. And um, in reference to having the building address Main Street, um, schemes two, three, and excuse me, two, four, and five all try to do that. And, and I commend the, the design team because they've done a good job, but they can only do as they're directed. And um, there are issues with safety of the police officers that were brought up during these discussions. And when, um, when the topic was brought up of having Main Street be lively and active, the police officers were quick to say, well, yes, but, and, and it's that yes, but that concerns me, and I think we have an example of that with the substation number five on Rigsby, where um, it's neither an open building nor, it, because the police were very much against having those windows, and so we end up with a building that really doesn't do either. and. Um, and so really, police safety and good urban planning was really our main concern. And I do think, as far as addressing Main Street, because the Carpenter Building is about 30 feet tall and the new police station, I'm assuming, will be about 60 feet tall, not exactly sure on that measurement, uh, the fact that there is a parking lot presently to the west and the fact that uh, Elizabeth Street is such a skewed angle, it actually will still have a presence on Main Street. And of course, eventually, there will be a building that will be built on that parking lot, I'm assuming, sometime in the near future. And if that building needs to step back ever so slightly so that we can maintain a view from Main Street, these are really talented designers, and I know that you're up for that job. Um, so um, I, I don't know if um, the FEMA standards were handed out to you. It's a whole list of, of requirements that need to be adhered to, and um, having a, a nice, open, welcome space along Main Street is not, uh, does not work well with the security of the police officers. Thank you. Uh, Wendy Hills. Hi, my name is Wendy Hillis, and I'm the Executive Director of Preservation Durham. I'm here to talk about historic importance and ask, um, answer the Mayor Pro Tem's questions. Um, first of all, I do want to say that we partnered with Durham Area Designers on the revised, the alternate scheme that was presented to you. And while Ellen just focused on the Main Street presence and the idea of activation on Main Street, I want to follow that up with some discussion of the historic importance of the building. So to specifically answer your question, to my knowledge, that building does not have any association with civil rights history. I mean, I'm sure something happened there, but that's not, that's not the main story associated with that building. And I would disagree that the building um, does not have any architectural merit. Um, 
while the building is not currently listed in any historic registry, I would say that's more of an oversight. Um, Duke University is not listed on any historic registry, and I think we can all agree that Duke University is historic and has some great buildings. I have had preliminary conversations with the State Historic Preservation Office about listing this property in the National Register of Historic Places. It looks like the way we would do that would be a thematic nomination of the early 20th century car dealerships on Main Street, of which there are several. And in fact, the county housing authority, I believe, is in one. Um, as you go down the street, Fishmongers is an old car dealership. Uh, the old Studebaker building, which is now Respite. Um, there's a whole series of them um, that date to the early part of the 20th century, and they were really integral to the tobacco history in town. People came and sold their tobacco at auction and then were flush with money and all went to Main Street to buy their new shoes and buy their new cars. So there's this story that can be woven in. Um, I think there is some architectural merit to the building. Um, I can name dozens of buildings in Durham of similar age and architectural merit that have been successfully rehabbed and continue to add to Durham's character. Fishmongers, the old Studebaker showroom on Duke Street, the old social services building at 300 East Main, the old book exchange building, the Five Points building where the cupcake bar currently is, Mateo, indeed most of the buildings on Main Street are of this era, brick buildings two to three stories. The other thing I want to address is the idea that this would be an additional $3.9 million add to the project. I would encourage you to think about that from a private development standpoint. And if this parcel was sold off and led to a private developer, that developer could take advantage of preservation tax credits, 20% federal credits at this point, and an alternative building code. Indeed, with a budget that's $18 million over at this point, how can you not maximize your return on what you have available to you? My quick calculations are that uh, with the three things we have located in red on the plan that was given to you, the three sites, at $26 a square foot, which is what you all paid for that site, that's $1.4 million. Add to that the demolition costs for the Carpenter Building and not having to abate the Carpenter Building, and I think there's a potential savings. Thank you. Uh, next is Dave Arneson. Good evening. Thank you for soliciting public opinion on this important issue. I'm just um, here to endorse the Durham Area Designer Scheme. Uh, I think uh, Ellen and Wendy have spoken eloquently about it. Um, I'd like to read a couple things from the Unified Development Ordinance uh, that I think are relevant here. In purpose and intent, it says protect existing neighborhoods, prevent their decline, and promoting their livability. Also mentions conserving the value of buildings, examining the most important, uh, most appropriate use of the land, and to protect historic sites and areas. This site's in the uh, downtown design support one district, and when you get to the um, definition for that district, it says this district is established to encourage intense development and pedestrian activity through regulations appropriate to the downtown area. Um, the standards encourage a vital downtown economy that enhances Durham's position as a commercial, culture, and entertainment hub of the region while increasing livability. The DDI is intended to work in tandem with the downtown Durham master plan and updates. And in the master plan for downtown, of course, you'll find all kinds of similar language about uh, walkable, livable, uh, mixed use, vibrant, uh, active streets, uh, and I think the scheme presented by Durham Air Designers accomplishes all of this um, uh, in a way that's superior to any of the five schemes that had been presented uh, previously. Uh, putting a police department on Main Street, um, I would offer, is uh, probably the lowest uh, pri uh, priority of any of the criteria that are in that matrix. Um, there's all kinds of very critical, important uh, security concerns and programmatic requirements, square footages, parking, all that kind of thing. Um, but why is it important that the police department be on Main Street? What function does that achieve or how does that benefit the community or the police department for that matter? Um, we've heard about the security concerns that are actually in conflict with the idea of putting the police department on Main Street. Um, 
private development on Main Street would um, satisfy uh, the goals of the UDO and the downtown master plan better than um, a large civic building with a single highly secure, and appropriately so, um, public entrance. Um, I'd also say that um, not only can the Durham Air Designer Scheme uh, save the city some money by selling off these parcels of land, uh, clearly we're not asking the city to spend the 3.9 to incorporate Carpenter into the police department, but uh, you also don't spend the money of demolishing that building. You generate some revenue by selling the property as well as the other two parcels indicated in the scheme. Um, but there would be ongoing uh, tax revenue generated by these private developments. So that would be a benefit that would pay long-term dividends to the city. Thank you very much. Welcome, uh, Leslie Frost. Good evening, Mayor and members of the City Council. Um, I intended to get here early and write down an outline of what I was going to say, but as I was getting ready to leave my house, there were two quick pops that sounded like firecrackers, and as I got on my bike, I saw that everybody was out on my street, and so I went around the block, and everybody was out on the streets and the blocks, and there's a man lying at the end of my street who has been shot, and the EMS truck came up very quickly, but it didn't leave, and I saw them doing CPR, and it brought home to me very viscerally how uh, important the police department is to our community, but it doesn't change the reason why I came to speak here tonight, which was to ask the city council to um, reopen the site selection process and choose a better site for the police department, our police officers, and to open up Main Street for the kind of development that will connect East Durham to the downtown and the economic engine of the downtown, and that will um, save the historic buildings that create the fabric of our city. Um, I'm sorry, I intended to be a little bit more eloquent, but I'm very shaken by what I saw, and I'm particularly shaken by like the two-year-old kids that were out on the street watching what I think was a man dying. So, thank you. Thank you. Are, are there other persons that want to speak on this item? If you could come up and just state your name and address, and you get the uh, yellow card as you've spoken, if you don't mind. Good evening. I'm John Martin. I live at 401 East Trinity Avenue. Um, and I've lived in Durham um, for almost half a century, even longer than Steve Shule. Um, so I have seen. Durham, unfortunately, continue to make the same mistakes over and over again. I mean, I've seen some good, very good things, but I've seen some of the same mistakes. When the mayor pro tem said, why did we tear those buildings down um, a mile and a half away, I couldn't agree more. When I came here, the Biltmore Hotel was still there. Um, the Regal Theater was still there. The donut shop was, was still, still there. Um, the Washington Duke Hotel, of course, was, was still here. We keep tearing down buildings, and then a few years later, we say, oops. Why, why did we do that? And I'm afraid we're about to do that again, and I, and I don't get it. Please delay this process a little bit longer. Look into the proposal that the Durham Area Designers has come up with. They're serious people. It's not somebody coming up like me, who's not a designer, not an architect, coming up and saying on the back of the envelope, I think you can do this. Let them look at it, let, let the city staff um, look at it, look at the kind of possible cost benefits that we can get, and then consider the fact that we also want to make East Main Street um, more conducive to pedestrians. I'm probably the only person here <laughs> who has walked after midnight um, from downtown back uh, to up East Main Street by myself. Um, that's when I lived in Golden Belt. And it's not, once you cross Roxborough Street, you know, it's a little bit scary. Um, we can put some more businesses there, some private um, businesses that are uh, open. We can make that part of Main Street thrive again. And it won't look like, unfortunately, what the former Haytai now looks like, where we've got the empty Rick Hendricks Chevrolet parking lot where the Biltmore Hotel used to be. Thank you. Next. J. 
John, could, could you sign a card, please, so we can have it for the record? Marcus Jackson, Trademark Properties. I have the good fortune of representing a number of property owners along Ramser Street. I also represented the carpenters in the sale of the police headquarters land to the city. And uh, also fortunate to represent the investor group that just acquired the Hendrick Chevrolet dealership and plan to turn it into a three to four hundred million dollar new development for the city. Uh, I'm here to talk about walkability, a pedestrian orientation, uh, enhancing an area that clearly can be a uh, new source for our eclectic, funky businesses to relocate. That is what drives our city, diversity, eclectic. They're getting dri driven out of, in some cases, getting driven out of the core of the center city by rents and newer development. Uh, a lot of the property along Ramser Street is already starting to transition to those eclectic and funky uh, locations that I believe drive Durham. Uh, Pony Source Brewing is getting ready to open in a couple of weeks. Uh, I would encourage you to walk into that brewery. They have sunk a serious investment in that facility. It opens in two weeks directly across from the police headquarters. I have the Bud Piper roofing facility under contract to a developer that plans to renovate and redevelop that facility. They're not planning to tear it down, they're planning to renovate it and turn it into what you and what I think the city desires. And, and so with that in mind, uh, I, I do believe the city and its architecture team has accounted for a pedestrian orientation, but I wanted to make sure it's enhanced. That we talk about East Main Street, that is important. But Ramser Street is a huge opportunity. Keep in mind what I just said about all of the eclectic businesses that are likely to locate there and have already started to locate there. Uh, no one has mentioned that the Dillard LRT station is also directly across from Ramser. And so Ramser Street is going to become very important. I want to make sure that the sidewalk system around the county parking lot is continued around the police headquarters and the, and the tree planting. Also, uh, in a number of the designs, there is private development on Ramser Street, but I want to encourage the city not to make the same mistake that a lot of cities make when they build a parking deck. Uh, they plan private development against it. The private development does not come for years, so the side of the parking deck is this horrible, barren-looking parking deck, and it's going to inhibit it what you want to happen on Ramser Street, and I've heard no one mention that. I'm not trying to add to the budget, but I think that's important, and I thank you for listening. Thank you. Are, are you going to speak? Yeah. All right. Hi, my name is Tim Walter, and I think I'm one of the funky little businesses that Marcus just mentioned. So I'm with the uh, reforming, revitalizing Durham Fruit and Produce Company, which will hopefully be an art center at the corner of Dillard and Ramser Street. So I'm kitty corner across the street from the uh, police station site. And one of the things that I'm really sensitive to is, yes, helping to connect East and West Durham. And one of the things that we're not looking a whole lot at, uh, because it's not in the program that the designers were given, but if we think about it, our municipal govern governments will have built roughly 900 spaces of restricted parking um, in those blocks and no added nothing to public parking in the area. So as you're looking to enliven those blocks of Main Street and helping to get people to walk from uh, East Durham back into Main Street, um, back down towards uh, the center part of town, um, if you park your car at the police station or in the county health department lot and you go to your business there, you have to leave, you have to move. You're not allowed to keep your car parked there. So it's, it doesn't really add much to the street life. So I think where these private developments, our municipal buildings where they private developments, we would have looked to the, to the developers to um, collaboratively address a parking solution and enliven the space that's there. So I just want you to be aware of, it feels like you're building a lot of parking um, and feels like you're generating a lot of pedestrian traffic and people that may park there, 
but they really are very limited in their usability and in the, um, the street life that will take place in that area. So something to be aware of. Thank you. You're welcome. Is there anyone else that wants to speak or comment on this item? No, this is not a public hearing, but it's an opportunity for people to speak if you have comments or questions. No, uh, just, just a minute, Ms. Peterson, you've spoken. No, you've spoken. Is there anyone else that has not had an opportunity to speak that wants to speak on this item? Uh, we're, not taking follow, we're not taking follow up questions, Ms. Peterson. If you were expect, you know, respect, we respect the chair, we're not taking follow up questions. Uh, I, I say a lot. I, I say, I, Ms. Peterson, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to debate that. I'm not going to debate that. I'm not, I'm not going to debate that. Okay. Well, I'm telling you, I'm not, I'm not going to, I'm not going to discuss it. <clears throat> I, I, I'm going to come back to the council. The question of what we build, where we build it, is what the council has to decide. I'll agree that $80 million is an issue, and that's what we're going to talk about. So having said that, I'm going to ask other questions by members of the council. Recognize Council Moffitt, and then So I, I have a couple of questions to start with. I wanted to ask uh, Ms. Hillis, um, if you come back up. I'm, I'm Ms. I'm I missed the, the um, you, you made a statement right at the end of your presentation on revenues at the city. My math. Hmm? My math at the end? Yes. If you would just repeat that for me. Sure. If you look at the three red areas that we have located on that plan, there's one of 35,000 square feet on Ramsar, 15,000 square feet, which is the triangle on Main Street, and 5,840 square feet, which is the, the footprint of Carpenter. At $26 a square foot, which is what you all paid for that land, that's $1.4 million. Plus, not having to pay to demolish Carpenter or do the hazardous material abatement on Carpenter. See, are you saying you think the value of the Carpenter building is the land? Well, I actually think the value of the Carpenter building is more than that. If you look down the block uh, at 300 East Main Street, the old uh, social services building, eligibility building, that sold in April 2014 for $1.8 million. Um, it was a building that had been renovated on the first floor. The second and third floor were in far worse condition, completely unoccupiable than this existing building. It's a slightly larger footprint, but using that uh, square foot number, I came up with a value of about 800000 for the Carpenter building alone. OK, thank you. And then I have a question for Mr. Jackson. Then while you're coming up, I'll say, Mr. Jackson, you were saying that you've done quite a bit of work in the area, and I just want to ask your opinion of the viability of selling the Carpenter building as is. Uh, you know, is it saleable, and would somebody buy it? And if so, in, in your professional opinion, knowing only what you know at the moment. Yes, yes, they would. Uh, uh, there is a serious momentum uh, and an investor appetite for urban real estate, and there's rapidly rising interest and city of Durham real estate, all you need to do is look at land prices, where they're going. Uh, you may recall Northwood Raven acquiring uh, the former Chrysler dealership uh, for $11,700,000 on 6.2 acres without site plan approval. Uh, and, and you all probably have seen the number, uh, the dramatic number of building trades in the last couple of years. It's just a huge amount of interest in the city of Durham, uh, and you all deserve some of that credit. You've, you've built a, a great vibe, you've got great momentum, so yes, it is sellable. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Recognize Councilwoman Katari. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I just wanted to say that um, actually I started this process preferring building on the current police headquarters site, but that is water under the bridge. So given that, um, regarding development on the Main Street site, I have a few questions and maybe comments for staff um, in no particular order. Um, one of the recommendations, well, so DDI liked schematic four and 
dad likes the hybrid of five plus one. Um, but just looking at the schematics for four and five alone, can you talk a little bit about the differences? Really, it's just, it looked like building massing to me, but I couldn't quite tell, so I wanted to hear what you had to say. Good evening, Jeffrey Bottomley with O'Brien Atkins. The differences between scheme four and scheme five mm -hmm. is the amount of um, building located on Hood Street in scheme okay. four. So there's a significant amount of that building facade on Hood Street, and um, yeah, that those are the differences. Okay, that's the main thing. Thanks. Yes, ma'am. Um, oh, thanks. <laughs> We're trying to keep multiple uh, things open up here at the same time. Um, let's see. Uh, can staff comment about sidewalks around the facility? That was raised by one of the. Thanks. Um, I think it'd be best to address that to the design team. Okay. The comment was made was whether s sidewalks would be required around the perimeter of the site. We would provide sidewalks around the perimeter of the site, correct? That's what I thought. Okay. And um, a comment was also made about surface parking. Um, and, and I believe the reference was really the bulk of the parking that I think the gentleman was referring to is really county. Um, can you remind us how many surface spots there are not in the garage in the proposed schematic? The visitor parking for mm -hmm. the headquarters is, uh, I believe, 72 spots. And that would be public, is that correct? That is for the, yes, that's assigned for the headquarters. And so evening, Visitors hours, to headquarters. evening hours that could be used by other people, it's open access, is that correct? That would be up to the, the owner. Okay, thanks. Um, so I guess turning now to Carpenter, um, and Wendy, I do appreciate your numbers. I'm not sure where you got the larger number at, at 5,800 square feet at $26 um, dollars per square foot. I came up with 151,000, so I don't know what the additional part you were referring she to. She was referring to the other red spaces, I believe, on the site. No, I've got okay. the 35,000 square foot um, land along Ramsar, that would be about 910,000. The triangle piece at 15,000 square feet, that would be 390,000. But 58, I use 5,840 Right, comes feet. out at 151,840. Right. I thought, for carpenter only. Right, I thought I heard a no larger number. I added know? the three of them together. No, not on the 1.4, but the second time okay. I heard a higher number. Okay. Just checking. Go ahead. I, I can't answer that. That was when she drew a comparable to yes. the sale of the building at the corner of Roxborough and Maine. Then she estimated the value of the Carpenter building at somewhere over $800,000. Right, as opposed to being raw land. Got it. Thanks. Um, so I guess this question is more to staff. Um, I know that we use that number roughly of $4 million to renovate the building and incorporate it into our design, but can you remind us what was in that estimate? In other words, if we were not using it and we were selling it, what do we think, uh, and you may not know, but um, what would it cost a private developer to renovate and use that building? I mean, in other words, the building needs work, is that correct? Correct, and our original estimate for 3.9 was if we were to incorporate some of our programmatic okay. um, space in the Carpenter building. The estimate of 4.2 was to return it to a usable core and shell facility, uh, a building. I'm not taking into consideration um, tax credits or any of the other things <clears throat> that may or may not be in play. Okay, I think that's helpful. I just, um, when we're trying to weigh all these things, yes, maybe we could preserve it, and yes, maybe we could keep it for, or sell it for private use, but someone would have to invest to um, improve the building. So um, let's see. The other thing I had, um, when we were originally talking about, well, some of the schematics with the triangle and or the land along Ramsar, if we were to sell that property, were, would we anticipate an RFP process or just a flat sale? I don't know if the manager well, contemplated it, it, it would, you know, that has not been determined yet. It would be, you know, consistent with, with the state law requirements, which could be either either of those. but. To be determined. Okay. 
I, th I think for me one of the questions was if, and I do support the retention of the land along Ramster for private development, I still don't know what I want to do along Maine, so I'm just putting that out there, but um, I do have concerns about if we maintain or release the triangle piece and the carpenter building, would we have any control in either case regarding design? I know people want uh, Main Street activated, et cetera, but once it's no longer in our hands, it's private development and you may not get what you want in that case either. And I just think it's important to put that out there. Um, and so I don't know if staff has any comments on that. I would just say, Councilmember Katati, yeah. again, you know, that would be something that you know would be determined at the time the property was declared surplus and uh, and solicitations were received. Uh, it, it's possible that we, you know, would would want to uh, put restrictions or or require submittals that met certain criteria, whether it be the carpenter building or the or the uh, the, the the property on the triangle. Uh, typically, uh, in in my experience, is though the, the more uh, restrictions that you place on those requirements uh, that's going to impact the you know the price and the values of what you receive because it's it's you know putting more costs on the uh, on the potential development but again that all would remain to be seen when, when we got to that point or if we got to that point I appreciate all that thanks I'm just trying to whittle away at all some of the decision points um, one other thing I certainly understand the concerns about the 80 million dollar budget um, but that does um, essentially staff is proposing that we reduce that by the 9.6 million Correct. in accommodations or changes and it also does not incorporate what I remember as being roughly 10 million dollars for the possible resale of the current headquarters site on Chapel Hill Street as well as Rigsby is that correct, correct. so so there are additional um, savings and then lastly I just wanted to say to your point Victoria regarding hiring officers, our population has increased and so we're always expanding police staff to accommodate that as well. Recognize Councilman Shul. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Mr. Mayor, before I, I have some questions about the headquarters, of course, but I did want to just address a couple of the things that were said were by speakers that I, I think just need some sort of response. So first I want to start, is Ms. Frost still here? Uh, it's terrible that you had to see that. And what happened in your in your neighborhood is a, is a terrible tragedy. And we don't know the facts, and you don't know them yet either. But I do want to acknowledge what you said and to say that this is, uh, as the mayor said, and he, he does, he says he thinks about this every day, and he works on it every day, and he does. And many of us think about this too. But I did want to acknowledge that what you had said and can understand how you feel. Uh, I also wanted to say uh, to Mr. Zaidi, um, the, I also have a lot of concerns about the officer involved shooting that took place the other night and I don't know any of the facts other than what was in the newspaper and there will be a police report on that and we will hear about it. Um, but I, this is the second time in the last three years that a, a a person who was suicidal um, was uh, killed by our police officers. And I don't want to prejudge that in any way because I don't know the facts, but I am very interested in uh, what happened. Uh, were, the, were, the, were the appropriate tactics used? Um, did, this, did this man have to die? And I have grave concerns about that. And um, appreciate you raising it because this is something we we need to know uh, on the police headquarters um, so just to uh, put a period on what uh, Diane was saying uh, we, we we throw around the 80 million dollars number but I think we're down now to maybe 71 million dollars or so uh, still expensive but I do think it's it's right to to, to think about what the real number is um, the, uh, to our staff, um, we, we're basing also this price on how, how, uh, um, the account, county participation, about $3.2 million, and so do we have a, a reasonable confidence level that this will be forthcoming? 
Thank you, Councilmember Schull. Yes, uh, we have had conversations with the county. The county has not uh, committed to a specific number. The, com the county has uh, uh, repeatedly affirmed that they agree to uh, a percentage participation of the communication center. Thank you. And the uh, and then I guess this is probably for um, uh, O'Brien Atkins. Um, the memo and what uh, Bo said earlier is the, the steering committee believes that the DAD uh, proposal misses an opportunity to have for the project to have a positive impact on Main Street. And I wondered if you could explain that, uh, that thinking. We believe um, that the, when we say it misses an opportunity to have a positive impact on Main Street, we're referring to the opportunity to um, directly impact Main Street with our project. We don't know what that future um, potential is and when you put restrictions as we mentioned on that property so that that positive impact that we're referring to is the impact that we control do you mean by process. that that you'll have a great building that will have a great presence on main street we <laughs> we will have a building that everybody in this room is proud of that is our goal i'm proud of the human services building i had nothing to do with it uh, <laughs> but i'm proud of it for our community but i'm not really proud of the way it faces main street mm -hmm. so what, what would you say about that I'm, I can't speak directly to that design. I don't know that, that process, and, and so I'm not going to criticize somebody else's work without oh, come all, all the information. <laughs> Give it a try. I, 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 I'll, I, I will just tell you that we will be back, and, and we will share um, designs of, of, of our project um, throughout that process, and you'll have opportunities to have feedback throughout that time. Okay. Um, but, okay, and so... Um, Uh, the the officer safety hmm. issue um, do you have any comments on that uh, that vis-a-vis uh, uh, -vis, uh, what Ellen Castley raised yeah so yes and, and we talked about this with dads um, Ellen wasn't able to be at that meeting but um, part of that is how you situate a building it's also how you design a building and so as designers um, we are given a site on Main Street and, and so we need to find the appropriate balance between addressing Main Street and making that active and considering the officer safety and, and that not only goes into how we design the facade um, whether we do if we it's glass is it bulletproof glass is it less expensive alternatives to glass that allow for some transparency there are um, transparent uh, GSA projects border buildings that um, weren't considered to be uh, buildings that had daylight or views, and there were inexpensive ways found to, to, to allow that to happen. So as designers, it's our um, responsibility to give you all the options, and we um, design appropriately. We, we, you know, we balance those needs. So tell me, uh, so can you say to me, what would be the advantages, the important advantages of the building being on Main Street as opposed to, say, behind Carpenter and another commercial building that might be in that triangle in, in the, uh, on that property but behind them? What would be the... the Again, the, you get that day one impact on Main Street. Mm -hmm. So you, you get a positive impact on Main Street um, day one. I think the other opportunity is that you don't have some of those, again, when we have those private businesses in front of the building, yeah. that's not a lot different than having those private um, businesses in the first floor of the building mm -hmm. there is a little space between them but not a, a, a great deal of space and then where we define the property line between those things and the police ability to um, you know in, to uh, control their site yeah. just become it, it just begins a blurred line I agree at, with at that. the front of the building yeah I agree with you that the police ability to control their site and what's outside of it is yeah. really important mm -hmm. do you um, could you build a, a building we would all be proud of behind those commercial buildings if they were there? That would be our charge, and yes. Yeah. Um, do you think that uh, just uh, having nothing to do with whether or not you're able to do that, which I'm sure you would as well, would you th do you think that 
uh, we talk about activating a street. Do you think that um, the, having the carpenter building and the um, and something else commercial in that triangle would would help activate that portion of Main Street? You know, how do you think about that, just as a, as an architect? I mean, I can't say that it would. I mean, there's no negative impact on Main Street, obviously, yeah. um, as as long as that there is demand for that space. Yeah, it can have a positive impact on Main Street. The, the question is demand for that space. And then again, I, I know this is probably not your exactly your area of expertise, but I bet you know a lot about it, which is if those were commercially available, if Carpenter was commercially available, what is your sense? We, Mr. Jackson, I believe, has already said that he thought there would be demand for it. And, uh, so did Ms. Hillis, but let's just say she has an axe to grind. Um, I wonder if you uh, would care to comment on, you know, from your knowledge of, the, of, of what's happening yeah. commercially here, whether or not you thought there would be a demand. I think O'Brien Atkins has weighed in on what our opinion of the uh, of okay. carpenters. Okay. And then, um, which I think would be that it would be very expensive to it would cost three and a half million dollars to renovate for a police facility and does not have any particular architectural um, wonderfulness. Again, I, we've commented on that and, okay. and, and, and rather than, than change our comment every time, I, I just refer to our past comments. Okay, I can't remember your past comment. but I, I apologize, I'm sure they're part of the record. I'm sure they are. <laughs> um, and then, the pro-con matrix um, was interesting, and um, let me see if I can get to that. My, my computer's trying to help me here. Okay. Here you go, I got it, it came. Thank you anyway, Don, appreciate it. Um, the, this was sent on 9-1-15. Is that the most recent that we have? The, uh, the matrix that was sent on September 1st would have only been a recap of the staff's initial attempt to, to rank and populate that matrix uh, based on the alternative scheme presented by dads. Yeah. We, the matrix that ranks all five uh, uh, schemes yes. was sent on August 21st? Yeah, right. Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. I just meant the dad one in this case. Thank you. I should have said also, I think, that I, I wanted to offer my appreciation for the dad for coming up with this idea. I mean, I had pretty much resolved myself that, and, and, I, and I do feel that we should not spend an extra three and a half to four million dollars on Carpenter, and so I had pretty much, uh, I feel pretty strongly about that. I, I don't think it's the best use of our money. So this is a way to help us out of that if, if we think it's a proposal that can work, and I'm appreciative of the creativity that went into it. So for those dads who are here, thank you. Um, on the pro-con matrix, the, the activating Main Street, and I guess then this is a, uh, a question for staff I'm thinking, although I'm not sure if architects were also on the steering committee, but the, do you, f the, the activating Main Street, um, Dad and Preservation Durham put a pro on that and, and um, the, st the steering committee put a con on that and I just wondered if you wanted to comment on, on that. Certainly, I think it's a good chance to clarify that item and a number of items on this list. I think we, throughout this matrix evaluated the pro con about what we could control when we built this project. So when we talk about activating Main Street, we are specifically referring to what we task our design team to do. Uh, and given the fact that the scheme that we were evaluating in this scenario completely uh, removed any city imprint over what happened on Main Street, our analysis was that 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 removed your opportunity through this construction project to have that imprint. Uh, okay. We understand what they're implying with a pro, which is that private development may, uh, when it achieves its potential, 
may provide that, uh, and uh, I think we don't necessarily dispute that, but our ability to control it with this project okay. is what we were commenting Great. on. Great. That's, that's very helpful. Thank you. Um, and then um, one more question, which is uh, you had referred to some concern about compressing the site that the DAD um, uh, plan would compress the site and you had some concern about that and I wondered if you wanted to just talk about that in a little bit more detail. Sure, and, and I can't get too specific because I would, I would say that, that that is sort of the unknown uh, that we reference a little bit of uneasiness about not really having had more time to evaluate the concept. I think uh, given that the uses get closer together um, they did, they were very diligent in maintaining our program, so I want to acknowledge up front that they used our numbers in building this scheme and they right. showed that to us. I think given the fact that um, th there are, that um, the Carpenter site has a buffer around it uh, in, in their scenario and that uh, we haven't fully run that buffer through our security consultant, uh, they did use a similar buffer. So I, I think they've tried very much to respect our program, and I'm not suggesting that we could not make it work. I'm only saying that we've provided a level of uh, diligence and review on the other five schemes sure. that we haven't here. And given that this is the least amount of the site dedicated to the police facility and its uses, that is something we would certainly <laughs> want to vet before moving forward. And, and if, if that, that vetting would take approximately how long, just a wild guess? I'm going to guess. put our team on the spot and ask them to comment on that. I'd say about a week. I internally, it would take a week, so we could get it back to you. OK. Yeah. Well, let me just say I'm, I'm very interested in that vetting. I mean, a week is a short period of time. And if it was a little longer, I'd be interested in that, too. So um, I think this has a lot of promise. Um, I can see why we, you know, yes, it needs to be vetted more thoroughly, um, and um, so I would be very interested in that, and hopefully we could, I, I'd like to support proceeding in that way. Okay. Mr. Mayor. You're welcome. Let, let me uh, at least share my thoughts on where we are. Uh, first of all, I want to say, like Diane, this was not my preferred spot. It wasn't the old police headquarters. It was Fayetteville, Fayetteville Street, Fayette Place. That, that was my preferred. But for whatever, for valid reasons, uh, that, that went out of the picture. I, I think we also need to understand the decision this council has made. And the decision the council has made is that we, knew we need a new police facility. I mean, I don't think anyone on, on here questioned that. Uh, and so we proceeded along that path. Uh, we proceeded along the path that this was the best slot out of the three that were, were proposed, the old police station, Fayette Place, and, then Fed, and Main Street. And we proceeded to assume we had a certain budget that we were working with. And the staff has explained pretty thoroughly the charge we gave to the architects, and they pretty much were designing based on the guidelines that we provided. I wasn't at the work session when these alternatives were, were presented. Uh, I've had a chance to, to look at them since. And I guess one of the questions, I, first of all, I was not in favor of supporting saving the old carpenter site for various reasons. I, I just couldn't see putting those kind of dollars into that building, especially when, based on what the architects were telling us, is value. So that, that was not in, in my favor, and it still isn't. And one of the questions I wanted to ask is, has, has there been any offers for that facility? since? It's been, I, I know El Central wants to stay there, but has anybody else? offered to buy that building? No, sir. Okay. So I, I, I guess I'm a little to buy the building before we even start talking about it. The building's been sitting there long before the city decided to use that site for police headquarters. And I'm trying to understand, was there any interest in that building? Okay, Marcus. Um, could you come to the, whoever's going to speak, if you come to the, uh, David Arneson, Center Studio Architecture. Sure. Uh, I've been speaking with a developer who expressed some interest in learning more about the building. They can't make any commitments, of course, but they expressed interest in learning more. This is recently? Yeah. But prior to that, nobody expressed an interest that you were aware of. Pardon me? Prior to this gentleman that you spoke to, had anyone else talked to you about purchasing that site or that building? No. Okay. Does anyone else know if someone was interested in that building prior to this discussion we've had? 
Ms. Frost, now you, you're free to, because I'm asking the question, so if you have an answer, feel free to come up. I think there's a difference between that building and that entire site. And previously, it was marketed as that entire site, which is the entire Carpenter Chevrolet. It incorporates, what, three or four buildings? So that building alone has not been marketed. And now that it's owned by the city, I don't know that it's in people's radar that it would be available. Well, I, I would tend to disagree with that. If, if a developer, somebody had an interest in that building, they would have expressed that interest to the owners, independent of the fact that the city now has it. Just no one has expressed an interest in the building until we came to this point. So I, I just haven't felt the need, from my perspective, that we should, given where our prices are, to do it. Ms. Frost. Um, so I did have a conversation with a developer who th said that he thought that the city had paid too much for the site, but that he w had been interested in the site. I mean, he hadn't bought it, obviously, but he was very interested in the Carpenter Building, um, and this came out. And I actually talked with another realtor. But again, this part of town is is sort of just, it's a, it, the momentum is going up for this part of town. So the fact that there hasn't been you know, interest in the last few years doesn't mean that there's not interest now. And, and the city's purchase of it and the discussion centered on the police headquarters, I think, has raised people's interest about what's there. So I, would, I, I wouldn't say that that would be the question, you know, has there been interest, but rather, would there be interest now? And I think, I think that would get a different answer. What, 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 what can the staff tell me, what, what did we pay for that building roughly? I see you've got demolition costs of about $256,000 or $489,000 selected. Them. $561,000. What, what, what do you think we paid for that building? For the Carpenter site, it was yeah. $5.49 million. For the, the site. Building. No, I'm not talking about the entire site. I'm talking about if we carved out the Carpenter piece. We, we haven't done an analysis okay. of, right. of that. We can do a basis on what we pay per square foot, but we've not done another analysis of what the market would bear. Okay. Again, let, let me go back to where, where, where I started. I, I didn't see the, the early models. I've had an opportunity to look at it. Uh, I do value the fact that designers have come up with a proposal. Uh, for me, I would not be averse to, I guess I'm where Steve is on this. I was there before, I, before he said it, but I would not be averse to the architects taking a look at that facility as proposed to come back and give the council uh, their appraisal of what it would take to do that design. Uh, especially when you're telling me it's another week or two weeks to do that. I don't think that's going to make that big of a difference. But at least we will have had six models that this council can now look at with numbers to make a decision. And with that, I think nobody can feel that their opinions weren't given, been given an opportunity to go through and express your feelings on this particular site. And it'll be back up to the council to make the final decision. Uh, I can tell you that the only way I support keeping the carpenter building uh, is that we had a private developer who was coming in and taking it off our hands, and we could guarantee that was going to happen. But otherwise, as far as I'm concerned, it could go. That's, that's a cost that I think this project can ill afford uh, at the dollars that we're at. So I, I would support where Steve is. I, we got, to me, it's just another model. So now we've got six models. We've got a model that doesn't have a cost attached to it. And if the architects feel that they can share, sure, Kevin. Only exception I take is that the other five schemes that you saw were vetted in terms of drawing them out. This is a diagram. We will have to go back and bring it up to that same level and then go back. So I, I just, I don't want to make a comparison that they are apples and oranges at this time. Okay. We can make them apples and apples, but I don't want you to say that they're the same because they're different at this point in time. Well, I, I appreciate that because that's what I was trying to understand. What would it take? To take it was it's the one to two week time frame would be there we'd have to get Len Lease involved because there was some cost vetting that would have to be done we will have to mass out those ideas on that diagram see if it pushes and pulls anywhere you know in terms of the, the square footage and things so but I just don't want there to be left that they're both at the same level a different amount of effort and time went into building those other five well I'm not I guess saying what they're I'm not well is, thought out how do we make an apples to apples comparison if we would have to go back okay. we would have to do the same type of diagrams that we did for the other five schemes 
We would have to look at it. We'd have to review it with Lynn Lease and then come back and tell you what all that effort and was. And obviously that's an additional cost that the that is correct. Is going. I think we need to factor that into it also. Yes, it is. It would around. be an additional. It is not in our original scope of work. Mm -hmm. That is correct. Well, again, for, for a project of this uh, importance and size, I think we need to do as much as we can to at least satisfy this council that we've done a thorough vetting of the And we options. would love to do that. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to be sure that okay. we understand what we're not comparing the same things at this point in time. Right. I, I accept that. But again, to me, two weeks for a project that's going to be here at least 20 or 30 years, uh, I don't think it's going to hurt us that much in terms of time. Uh, if, in fact, you can get to the apples, apples, uh, please. Uh, are there other comments that we have? Mr. Manager, I don't know, I'm sorry, Councilman Davis. Uh, not about this, but I, I, I'd like to go back at some point before we leave here tonight. Uh, and I don't want to blindside anybody, but this community has had a lot of uh, disturbances over the last little bit of time. And I'd, I'd like to not leave here uh, without hearing from our police department to find out what they are seeing and what kind of discussion we can have about the violence that we've experienced uh, over the last two weeks or so. Uh, this may not be appropriate, and, and if not so, let me know. But um, uh, the issue has been raised by some of the speakers, um, and, and there are issues about past violence, and of course the uh, violence is down overall, but the issue is this is on the minds of people here in Durham, and if they can give us anything beyond what we've heard tonight, it would be beneficial to me. And I, I think you have a valid question, and I, I want to hear as much as we can hear without jeopardizing what type, whatever investigation is going on. I, I like to deal with this issue. Yeah, that's why I said it's not appropriate. Where, where, so where we're at. whenever it's appropriate, yes. All right. So let, let me try to come back to where we are. Uh, are there any other comments? I recognize Councilman Marfin. I have a, a, a few comments. I, I find it's one of the more challenging issues that we've dealt with, as I'm sure all of us do. Um, you know, we're balancing the needs of the men and the women who work for the city of Durham, the impacts on Main Street and all the people who live east and west of this site, and, um, and the impacts on the community, and of course, long-term capital spending implications. Um, I will say that cost, you, know, you can't just say, oh, it's 60 or it's $71 million, because it's related a lot to the program, the uses, and, um, and what we're doing there. So in trying to, I'm very concerned about the costs. And um, one of the things that I would be interested in hearing a little bit more, I think the staff can do this. I asked them to do this this morning, and it, was not possible, but they've come back and said, in the, in the time allowed, they've come back and said that um, cost per square foot with the peer cities for the facilities they built, which I thought was interesting, but I, I got to thinking about the cost per resident, for example, how much did different communities, and of course it depends a lot on what the program is, what are the uses that are going into the facility. But um, so far what I've seen, on the little bit that we're able to put together, it, it hasn't set off alarm bells for me. What did set off alarm bells was apparently the first estimates we had were really poor. And um, we need to make sure that we have good estimates going forward because we don't want to have continuous surprises. Next thing I want to say is, is that on the question of whether or not we should have a statement building, should, should, is it important that the building have frontage on Main Street in order to be able to have an impact on the street, the building have an impact on the street? From the beginning I've said that I've been concerned about what this building might, the impacts that it might have on the street. And I know that the designers are excellent, that the firm is great, but I'm concerned about the conflict between what we're calling the need to activate Main Street and safety and security of the people working in the building and the site. We've, we heard some talk about controlling the site, but we've picked a site that's bounded by four public streets. It's, it's, it's almost, as, um, as open a site as we could possibly go for. So, I'd, so I'm looking at what, what's the conflicts between those issues and whether or not uh, in the DAD, the DAD proposal, they've actually pushed the, the building back away from Main Street. And for me, 
I think about what, what, when we go into a community, when you go into a community and you say, what, what makes this Durham as opposed to anywhere USA? And part of that is the historical context of what's here. So I think it's important to really look at the historical context, preserve it where we can when it's cost effective. So when we were looking at spending $4 million on the Carpenter Chevrolet building, and I was weighing that against our other capital needs, I couldn't get there but because of all the trade-offs. But if we could sell it, which I think is something that we should look at, if we can sell the triangle and therefore have uses along Main Street, which actually add to the experience um, I, to give not just something that's handsome, not just something that is landscaped, but something that actually provides uses that people want to walk to, to access, to use. Um, and if we can do that without it costing us $4 million, then I'm in. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, are there other comments, questions? Uh, if not, then I, I don't know if we have, need to have a motion or is it sufficient? Mr. Mr. Manager, you understand? There's a consensus of the council that we'll take a few weeks and do some additional review and come back at either the 24th work session of September or the first work session in October. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, let's move to the 